Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So as you guys know, we often like to talk about the prices of cryptocurrencies through the lens of logarithmic regression. One of the reasons we like to use logarithmic regression is because it, it's one of the best ways to model something that has more explosive price appreciation earlier on, and then it sort of settles down as time goes on. It doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money from cryptocurrencies. We just have to respect the fact that we are likely going to continue seeing diminishing returns. And this is something we've seen with Bitcoin. It's been a thesis we've had for, for a long period of time that we will see diminishing returns from one cycle to another. And it makes sense to assume the same thing for Ethereum. Therefore, it of course makes sense to use something like logarithmic regression, where you would likely see the continuation of those diminishing returns. Now, the Ethereum logarithmic regression chart is something that is extremely useful, or at least it has been extremely useful for identifying accumulation phases before a future Ethereum bull market. Okay, now it's been a while since we talked about it, but one of the things that I often get asked about is when are we going to have another Ethereum accumulation phase of a lifetime video? If you're unsure of what I'm talking about, if you go back to July of 2020, I put out a video called Ethereum, the accumulation phase of a lifetime. And then ever since then, everyone wants to know when's the next one going to come out. At least I, I occasionally see it, probably not everyone, but I do occasionally see that comment. And the reason we put it out back then was for, for a number of reasons. First of all, we had already gone through a fairly brutal bear market. And then we were in the accumulation phase. It looked like we had put in like a double bottom and we were back at the fair value logarithmic regression band for Bitcoin or for Ethereum. We were at that fair value and so was Bitcoin. It was also around its fair value fit to again, quote unquote, non-bubble data. This regression band that you see in this video is the same regression band that you can see here. It's the same one. I haven't changed it at all. It's the same exact regression band. Maybe I slightly changed the color of it, but it's the same one. I have not refit it. Maybe I will, but I have not refit it. It's just the same, um, the same exact chart that we showed back then. Now, one of the things to, to consider when looking at this chart is, will we eventually make it to the regression band? Now, this chart probably looks really similar to another chart that you've seen before, and that's the one for Bitcoin, right? It's the Bitcoin regression band. And again, for Bitcoin, it's also fit to, again, quote unquote, non-bubble data. The idea that you take just this data, fit the logarithmic, fit, fit it using logarithmic regression, and then just extend it out and say, well, this is the accumulation phase. For instance, for Bitcoin, it was only fit through, I believe, you know, somewhere in here early 2019, but it still did a great job of saying, hey, this is still an accumulation phase, even by late 2020, right? It still said, this is an accumulation phase for Bitcoin, okay? So with Bitcoin, probably by the end of the year, I will refit the lower regression band just to slightly tweak it. This is something we said during the last bear market that whenever we have a new market cycle, we will need to refit it just to get it as accurate as possible. So do look for that. But it begs the question, if Bitcoin is already in its lower regression band, why isn't Ethereum, right? Why is it not? And then it begs the question, well, if Ethereum goes to its lower regression band, what does that mean for Bitcoin? Well, that takes us back, of course, to the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. And as you guys know, as I've said over the last several videos, I do believe the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation remains extremely bearish over the medium term. Okay. Now, I know the last couple of weeks, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation has seen a nice little bounce, right? And these bounces can be brutal for people because you know, it, 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 can, it can always get people to just FOMO back into the market. We talked about this idea of, you know, this Wyckoff distribution of the Ether Bitcoin pair. Also, a lot of regulations coming. Also, the Fed's not really um, looking like they're about to pivot immediately, especially with inflation still um, very much out of control. And therefore, usually everything, a lot of cryptocurrencies bleed against Bitcoin during these bear markets. So with that in mind, if we were to assume that Bitcoin stays between, say, like 15K, to, to 30k, 25 to 30k, um, for you know, for for several more months, 
then we could envision a scenario where Bitcoin is continuing to sort of chop around in this range. I mean, maybe it goes slightly below it. And if it does, we'll, we'll likely just try to get a slightly better fit. But where Bitcoin could still say, you know, more or less in this range over here, and maybe Bitcoin's going to have a bounce. And a lot of people are looking for a bounce. Um, but you could argue that Bitcoin might actually stay in this range and Ethereum could actually make it down to that lower regression band, right? And that would still be in line with the idea of the Ether Bitcoin pair. Again, I know it's in a local bounce and, and, and people might point to that to say, well, this is wrong. But let's assume that the downtrend continues. You could see something like this where Ether Bitcoin goes down, Bitcoin USD stays relatively constant. I mean, it might go down a little bit and bounce back up and, um, and whatnot. But you can see that the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation from this local high is already down 25%. And to the low that it's already put in, it went down 36%. So if something like that were to continue, you could envision Ethereum making down it down into the lower regression band, even if Bitcoin doesn't significantly go below its own. For instance, the Ethereum USD valuation, we need to bleed about another 50% or so to get down to the fair value of Ethereum fit to, again, quote unquote, non-bubble data. And for Ethereum, that just means more or less fitting it to this data over here, right? And, you know, I've, I've, I've received those questions before, again, about the accumulation phase of a lifetime for Ethereum. What does it take for us to get back to that? Well, I've said before, right, you know, in a bear market, I know everyone likes to YOLO all their money into altcoins and whatnot. But, and I've been very open about this, that I, you know, I, I think cash is king. Um, I think that, you know, Bitcoin remains um, probably the wisest play if you're going to buy anything in crypto. And the reason is because a lot of things are just in macro downtrends against Bitcoin right now. I know a lot of them are in a local bounce, um, but you try to, you know, if you, if you look past the local bounce, you can see that most everything remains in a macro downtrend against Bitcoin. And so I look at this chart and I say, you know what, we can envision what this might look like, right? I mean, we can envision what this might look like. The first question is, well, what is the fair value fit to non-bubble data? For Bitcoin, it's currently at around 23.4K, just below 23.4K. Again, if we were to refit it in a few months, it might bring that down slightly by a couple thousand dollars. So, you know, have that, have a little bit of uncertainty in there. Um, and then the lower bound on Bitcoin's regression band is already, is, is still below 16K. Um, but if you have, if you just give a little bit of uncertainty to that by maybe a couple thousand dollars or so, and, and you look at the Ethereum USD regression band, what does it range from? Well, it currently ranges from approximately $415 to $860, but the fair value of Ethereum fit to non-bubble data is $600. I mean, you know, I don't really know how else to say it. That's just what it is. I don't control what it is. I'm just here to, here to tell you what it is. And, and that's the fair value of ETH fit to, again, quote unquote, non-bubble data, all right? And it, it sort of begs the question, well, how does Ethereum go to 600 bucks? Does it have to? It doesn't actually have to to get to the fair value. Remember, the fair value is a monotonically increasing function. So depending on how long it takes us to go down, we might not have to go down as low. By a year from now, the fair value fit to non-bubble data is probably going to be closer to eight or $900. If that sounds crazy, I will remind you, Ethereum already went to $900, right? Like it already it already went there. So, so let's not get too up in arms about, about something like that. But with the idea of a $600 ETH, does it make sense from a market cycle perspective? You know, could you see an ETH at 600 bucks from a market cycle perspective? Does it make sense to go down another 50%? Well, you know, I, I will say it, it, it's, you know, Talking about the bearish scenario is is never a popular thing, right? It's not like it's a popular thing. But one of the things to, to think about is comparing these bear markets, right? And one interesting thing is if you look at Ethereum's downside in the first bear market, it ended up being around 94%. Now, the interesting thing about that is that Bitcoin's first market cycle saw downside to the tune of about... 94 percent right so like ether went down 94 95 percent during its first cycle bitcoin went down 94 percent during its first market cycle what did bitcoin go down its second market cycle well went down around 87 percent where do you think an 87 percent correction will put ether from its all-time high of around 4800 well it's already gone down 81 percent so you might say oh we've already gotten close to it well, remember, these percentages can be kind of tricky if you're if you're not familiar with with percentages. 
An 87% correction for ETH puts it at 600 bucks, right? That's where it puts it. Um, so with that in mind, if we were to sort of fast forward and, and, and sort of just uh, expand this regression band out, um, and again, we don't know, it's hard to know exactly what the future is going to bring. Obviously, the, the macro looks quite a bit different today than it did back in, um, you know, than it did in, in 2020 and 2019. But if you were to look at something like this, you know, if, if the Ether USD valuation ends up coming down to these levels and even goes to the lower bound of the regression demand, and if it, if it moves around in here, you can kind of see what would maybe lead us into the next bull market, right? And, and, and how we might, I mean, maybe we don't go that high that I just drew, I just sort of drew a random line. Um, but if, if we were to do something like this, and, and actually I know a lot of people are hoping for a bounce in the short term, so let's draw that in. Um, but if, if we do end up coming down to these levels and then gearing up for another bull market after the Bitcoin halving, you know, I, I feel like you could you could kind of envision something like that happening and, and it would actually fit really well with this regression band. And so uh, a lot of people keep saying, well, when's the next accumulation phase of a lifetime? Is it now? Was it yesterday? Was it three months ago? And, and, and Ben didn't tell us. First of all, I don't offer financial advice. Um, but I, I will say that whenever, if and when, if and when Ethereum goes back into the regression band, and then we start trending sideways like we did over here, then you can start looking for that, you know, accumulation phase of a lifetime type, type stuff, right? I think right now we're at the point of the cycle where most people are, are completely fine talking about the downside risk, especially because, you know, the market's already wrecked everyone or a lot of people. And so it's not that hard to imagine the market continuing to ultimately go down, especially when you look at these things and it looks like a lot of valuations against Bitcoin are in macro downtrends, not just Ethereum. I mean, honestly, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, while I think it looks bearish, it's not nearly as bearish as some, you know, valuations against Bitcoin. There's a lot of alt Bitcoin pairs that look, I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. And it looks like the alt Bitcoin pairs are, are not all of them, right? But a lot of alt Bitcoin pairs are like, likely just asymptotically headed to zero. Um, they'll never quite, a lot of them won't quite make it there, right? There's always a buyer, but, or there typically is. But, with you know, when thinking about this and, and an ether that's at twelve hundred dollars, I have to imagine you know if if Bitcoin saw an eighty seven percent correction over here when the macro looked better than it does today, why does it not make sense to assume that this could ultimately play out and that we eventually enter an accumulation phase? And again, I know I know a lot of people here have been um, kind of upset that I've been bearish on Ethereum and especially the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, but I, I as I said before, right I. I will be an Ether bull again one day, and especially I will be an Ether Bitcoin bull one day, meaning I'll be a bull on the Ether Bitcoin valuation one day, but unfortunately, that day is not today. It will come eventually, but I think we need to look at a better, we need to have a better macro outlook. We need to have something where it, it looks like the Ethereum USD pair is, is finding a more convincing bottom, and it's not just another lower low and lower high, and... It, we also want to be a little bit more confident that Bitcoin USD has bottomed. And there there are a couple indicators that say that Bitcoin USD has bottomed, but there's a lot of them that still say we could have another leg down eventually, right? Eventually. The other thing to remember for the Ether Bitcoin pair is that the bottom for Bitcoin USD occurred in December of 2018, but the bottom for Ether Bitcoin did not occur till about eight or nine months after that, right? About nine months later. So it could be that Bitcoin USD bottoms sooner rather than later, and then perhaps Ether Bitcoin bottoms half a year after that, right? And once you get into a phase like that, where it looks like not only Bitcoin is bottomed, it looks like Ether USD is bottomed when they're in accumulation phase, and it seems like the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation is finally turning back around, especially as we get closer to the to the 2024 Bitcoin halving, and assuming that the Fed is pivoting and that inflation is under control, and, and, and then Bitcoin is, is showing strength, then you can kind of envision that accumulation phase of a lifetime. I think the important thing to remember right now is that bear market rallies can happen. Um, you know, you see them all the time. They're, they're nothing new. Um, we can see that the Ether Bitcoin pair is, while it isn't a local uptrend, it seems to be in a medium term, a medium term downtrend, right? It, it, and you could argue that it's like a, a long term uptrend, right? A long term uptrend, a a medium term term downtrend and then a little short term uptrend right so you know 
some things can be short-term bullish or short-term bearish and then long-term bullish or long-term bearish, right? You can have different types of, you know, different levels of being bullish and bearish on something based on, on the time frame that you're looking at, of course. Um, but that's just kind of what we're looking at, right? I think that's kind of what we're looking at right now is that we need to be we need to be somewhat careful with the ether usd pair especially with it being with it looking relatively bearish against bitcoin um you know going through the end of the year more than likely and and saying you know what if bitcoin gets stuck between let's say 15k and 25k for for months to come you could easily see the ether bitcoin pair seeing some you know continued continued move to the downside and with regulation with regulatory risks and whatnot and and some of the things we've seen over the last few months um, it's not that hard to imagine us seeing a bit more downside before ultimately finding a more convincing bottom for the Ether USD valuation. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. We also have that sale on Into the Cryptiverse Premium at intothecryptiverse.com. So check it out, lock in the lower rate, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.